and I'm going to put you on the spot, okay? I absolutely hate this question. London, November 2022. I'm at the launch of a brand new book. Gathered outside the venue, I see a group of Erasure fans who are here, like me, to witness the event. I'm here to interview the author, Richard, and to document the day. I hope you enjoy. I'm here with Richard uh, at the book signing of his new book, which is called... Listening to the music the machines make. So tell me a bit about the book. What, what made you want to do it? Um, the book came about a good few years ago now, and it's been sort of something that's been circulating in my mind for a while. Um, I, I, I read all the biographies um, of, of all, the, all the artists who are from this era, because that's my era, it's when I grew up. Um, and I started to notice that they don't always tell the same story. And it's like these, these bands, you know, sometimes they, sometimes they lie. <laughs> um, just to make themselves look better or to sort of improve their sort of status in the history. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes I think they just can't remember because it's like 40 years ago. And I started to think, wouldn't it be interesting if you put all these different stories together in one book uh, so that you can sort of see what's happening when and what's happening at the same time. Is it um, chronological then, the way you've it's, done it? It's, broadly, it's chronological. There's three sections. Yeah. Uh, first one is 1978 and 1979, yeah. uh, which is, is called the revolution section. Yeah. 1980 and 1981 is the transition section, and 1981 and 82, sorry, 82 and 83 is the mainstream section when everything just goes bonkers. Um, so, so yes. Uh, so the idea was to, to put all these stories together in one place um, so that everything sits against everything else. So it's like the definitive Bible. This was, this was kind of my lofty ideal. <laughs> um, but instead of going to the people today and saying, what do you remember for about 40 years ago about you yeah. know, this single release or this, this, this album release or this tour, I went to the original sources. So yeah. I went to the British Library. I spent days and days and days in the British Library and I read through pretty much every issue of The Enemy, The Melody Maker, Sounds, uh, New Sounds, New Styles, Smash Hits, uh, Record Mirror, the, the whole lot, you know, everything I could find from that era, the 78 to 83 era. And I took photos of all the bits that jumped out. So I've got reviews and news stories and interviews and, you know, live reviews, the whole lot. Uh, and then I sort of took all this back and I, it's kind of like having a jigsaw. I had literally thousands of pieces and I just started to sort of put them into an order um, so that it told the story of those times from the original interviews and, and sources from those times. If you're enjoying this, smash that like button. And if you want to see hours of content that's similar to this, then check out the rest of my channel. What can you see? Well, there's interviews with old school hip hop artists. There's interviews with electronic musicians. There's even some punk. Your shit, fuck off. Plus there's stuff on records, vinyl and other pop culture stuff. So subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future stuff. And do what's right. Subscribe. Subscribe to the Sky as YouTube channel. So, oh, so how long did, did the actual research take? I mean, that sounds like a, <laughs> sounds like a, a lifetime work. Uh, the research took probably a few weeks, really? all, all added together, a constant few weeks all added together. And it was all happening in the pandemic. So it's kind of a nightmare because I live in Dorset. Um, oh. The research, research materials were in London. Yeah. Um, so it's like almost the first thing I did after lockdown was to start traveling up on the train in, to London. And then I'd walk from Waterloo all the way to King's Cross because I didn't want to go on the tube because it was scary. Uh, and the um, British Library opened just for like three hours at a time. Really? Uh, and I'd, I'd just cram as much into that three hours as I possibly could and I'd take all this st stuff away. Um, so I'm gonna ask you a question. So the first is, what, what fact most surprised you 
from doing the book that you thought, <laughs> oh, wow, or do you want people to find that out by reading it? <laughs> no, no, I think the most interesting thing to me is actually not to do with the music at all, um, but in 1982, I think it was, the Musicians Union tried to ban the synthesizer. Yeah. And the Musicians Union London branch had a meeting about this and they decided, I think Barry Manilow was to blame because Barry Manilow had gone on tour and instead of taking his usual orchestra or string section or something, he'd taken a synthesizer player. And the synthesizer, and, and the, the, the people who would usually be on that tour were like, this is no good, the synthesizer's putting us out of a job. And they took this to this meeting at the Musicians Union in London in 1982 and the Musicians Union banned they, they voted to ban the synthesizer and it wasn't like a musician's union decision it had to then go to the sort of the next level yeah uh, at which point it kind of all got lost because there was this huge sort of outroar you know from fans and bands and all sorts of things but God. i thought that was absolutely fascinating um that, 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 it's, that someone decided that the synthesizer was putting people out of work and, and should be banned yeah and i'm going to put you on the spot okay in no particular order Give me your three favourite artists or tracks from that era. I absolutely hate this question. No, no, but I've got to ask it. I've got to ask it. It's, 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 it's so impossible, so I have to just do it completely off the top of my head. Can I do albums instead of tracks? Albums, yeah, albums okay. are fine. In that case, Love and Dancing by the League Unlimited Orchestra. Oh, fantastic. The, Martin Russian. Yeah, the spin-off from Dare. And can I tell you something? I contacted Martin when he was alive and he used to be on MySpace. Right. And I messaged him on MySpace. I've still got the email. And I said to him, um, I love it. And he said, yeah, he goes, that was a lot of work and I'm redoing some stuff. And then a couple of weeks later, he died. He died, yeah. Unbelievable. But yes, yeah. fantastic choice. <laughs> yeah, so, so that one, uh, I will go for um, A Secret Wish by Propaganda. Okay, yeah. Because I think that's absolutely fantastic. And it's not quite an electronic record, but off the top of my head, I'm going for Cupid and Psyche 85 by Scritti Politti. Really? Mm. Okay. And it will change, it will change. <laughs> and it will week. change, yeah. If you, if you ask me in 10 minutes, I'll have three different three yeah. different things for you. Okay. <laughs> so let's have a look at the book. Let's have a look. Okay. Let's open the book up and let's have a look at it. Yeah, no problem. What's in there? It's a nice green inside. So with that. As I was saying, this is the first time I've seen the book properly, so... Uh, this is as much new to me as it so is to you. This is the first time you've actually held it. This is the first, yeah, today is the first time I've held it. This is literally the first book out of the box. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is the first moment. Uh, dedication to my dad. Okay. And thank yous to all the people who helped me. And then this is, the, so this is the contents section. So okay. it divides it into the different years, as you see, and you can see some of the names of the bands that I talk about. Yep. So some of them very, very well known. Yeah, OMD are there. Um, Gary Newman's there, and some of them less so. So we've got Fad Gadget in there, Cabaret Voltaire. Visage, uh, I can see. Visage, yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's the Musicians Union, first first Musicians Union one. Okay. And then, oh! Also, there's some pictures as well. Bowie with <laughs> so a fag? Bowie. So Bowie was one of the most inspirational characters on this generation of new music makers, which yeah. is why he's there. And there's a little quote here from Robert Moog, uh, yeah. saying that he didn't think that the synthesizer would ever take off. He thought he'd do a hundred, and that'll be it. I think Gary <laughs> Newman would disagree. Yeah, exactly. And so there's more pictures. So this is the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. Okay. Um, again, this is like the section where I'm talking about the things that came before the period I'm writing about. Um, so the influences from different places. So things like glam rock, punk rock, um, kraut rock, uh, the Radiophonic Workshop, so Doctor Who and all that sort of thing. Okay. Oh, and there's Gary. And then, yeah, there's Gary. So then we move into the book itself. So this is the 78 and 79 section. Uh, and it's the sort of the first wave of, of, of people who, they, they, they picked up the synthesizer in the same way that um, people used to pick up the guitar, guitar in, in, in the punk era. Yeah. Um, so they had this sort of punk attitude and this new instruments, which they couldn't really play. So they started making these weird noises in their bedrooms and that's what started this, 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 this whole revolution. So this section is called Revolution. Uh, Sex Pistols, The Future, The Human League, New Music, Devo, David Bowie, Tube Bay Army, and Ultravox. And it's quite interesting because by the time I get to 1983, 
there's not that many bands who were there at the beginning who are also there at the end. Well, I think um, uh, Gary Newman had retired by then, hadn't he? He, he kind of had dipped, yes, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, so, you know, the Human League were, but they were very different by the, the end. Ultravox were, were at both ends, but they were a different band by the end. Yeah. Um, so everything sort of over this six year period that I, that I, that I look at, uh, everything, everything changes and they completely take over the entire music industry. And we're doing, what, what can we expect today? Uh, so today, uh, so we're in London today, this is the official launch uh, event for the book. And what a beautiful day it is. Yeah, a a absolutely pouring, pouring with rain. <laughs> uh, and today I am going to be uh, interviewing Martin Ware. own book out called um, Electronic, Electronically Yours Volume 1, yep. which is also a great read. Uh, so I'm going to be talking to him about his life in electronic music and about that book. 15, uh, I decided to kind of stop taking my life on what made me happy and I realised that being creative was the main thing. And so I made a vow to myself to do something creative every day and I've been thinking about doing an autobiography for a while and thought, you know, Basically, that covers me for quite a few days. <laughs> if, I do, if I do an autobiography, I, uh, I, it gives me some focus away from the sheer horror of the uh, dystopian nightmare of COVID. So Human League and... The Human Kevin League, Kevin 17, British Electric Foundation. Yeah. Um, he also produced Tina Turner, Terence Trent D'Arby, Erasure. Okay. Uh, and so we're going to do that. Then he's going to be signing his book. <laughs> Uh, and after that, I'm going to be interviewing Andy Bell from Erasure Excellent. on stage uh, about his life in electronic music. Do you think that being on mute made a difference in yes. your career? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I think mute did really an incredible job as well for, you know, at that time, we, you know, we, we had pluggers, we had a huge plugger for TV and radio, and, you know, they did the press as well, which all the stories in the press are planted all the time, you know? So when people don't realise it's, you think, oh, it's their life and stuff like that, like Robbie, and it's, oh, that's what's really going on. It's not at all. You know, it's every single story is planted. And, um, you know, you kind of, and as well, you don't even think about that either at the time. You know, you think, oh, it's just normal. <laughs> and then only when you grow up a bit, you realise the machinations, you know, behind everything. And, uh, and it kind of makes me feel a bit sorry for the for the young people that's going through it now. It's now it's totally exposed everything. And I thought I could never live my life twenty four seven like that. I couldn't do it. So because of that, you've never quite been tempted to sort of, you know create your own thoughts. Well, you know, I said to, I mean this is said to me as well. Please don't learn how to program synthesizers because you'll put me out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, should, I couldn't do that. You know, I couldn't. I can change a plug, but I can't, I can't program anything, you know. I can't do Photoshop or anything. They're you know, useless, those things. I feel like we haven't done our best work. I think that's the brightest dilemma of us, you know. That's the perfect situation. Yeah. It's like if you've always got something to aspire yeah. to, something you to, 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 to work to I think all bands as well, you go through your boring period, you know, when you're bored, and you can hear it, it's like Love Boat. <laughs> so what's the period after the boring period? Uh, I think I think it came up uh, during uh, Nightbird. That's when it started coming back up again. Right. Yeah, and it has. It has. I mean, it takes ages. You know, it's like it as I said, we don't have publicists and all these people running around. So that's why I love mute as well because it's all very homegrown. And it's kind of, it is organic, you know, it's just, if it happens, it's real. It's not you really being promoted and blitzed beyond your talent, you know? And then we're going to be signing, I'm going to be signing my book, and he's going to be signing some erasure stuff. And we're doing another one in, is it 
in up north? Yeah, next weekend um, is Sunday the 13th. I'm going to be at the Louder, Louder Than Words Festival in Manchester, okay. uh, again with Martin Ware. Um, it's a, it's, the, the, the festival is a festival of, ele uh, of music writing. Okay. Uh, so it's three days of events with people who have written books about music. Uh, and Martin and I are doing an event together with a guy who's a professor, Professor Martin James uh, from Southampton University. Okay. And we're going to be talking about this generation and the sort of the birth of electronic music. So I'm going to try and get the video out. So if I get it out, people can still go along. <laughs> exactly. 13th... So no pressure for me to win yeah, it away. No, no pressure at all. But 13th of November, Manchester, Louder Than Words Festival. Okay. <laughs> right now, I'm kind of a bit bowled over by the fact that I've actually written a book. <laughs> it's, it, it looks like a real book and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a fantastic feeling. Brilliant. Okay, well, thanks, Richard, and I'm looking forward to the event. Thanks, mate.